Hi, I'm Valerie, and welcome back to Now Gardening. Today we'll be all about sowing seeds indoors, how to start seeds indoors, what works and doesn't work, when to sow seeds indoors, and mistakes to avoid. So those of you who have been with me for a while know that I love using recycled things for starting seeds. And I'm a huge believer that you don't have to break the bank in order to build a garden. And this is my typical gear. It's a used yogurt container. I fill it up with a little bit of garden soil and if I have perlite on hand, I mix it in so that it stays nice and loose. And then I use seeds, many of which are from my last year's crops that I've saved. If you're on a budget, don't worry. You really don't need all those fancy things that you see at the garden store. They look cool, but they're not necessary. And stay with me because later on, I will tell you exactly what works and what doesn't work. And tell you the things that I have wasted my money on so that hopefully you can avoid wasting your money too. So before we get started, let me show you my normal process and how I sowed these basil seeds. Soil, seeds, water, and I put them on a radiator to heat the soil and speed germination. You can also cover them with plastic to keep the moisture and heat in. You can also use the top of your refrigerator or a heat mat. And this is the basil after one week. Here is the same basil last summer after I had moved it to the garden and started harvesting it. As I mentioned, I start almost all my seeds in these yogurt containers. They are quite shallow, which is great for seed germination, but it does mean that I have to transfer the seedlings eventually if they're not going outside soon. Please be so kind as to hit that like button down below. That helps other people that are just starting out gardening also start to see my videos. In the meantime, I'm gonna take you out to my cabin and show you the things that work and don't work for starting seeds. So let's go, it's about to get dark on me. Now we have a few different things here to show you what works and doesn't work. I'll tell you, these I got off of Amazon. These are seed trays. Do not recommend them. They just, they're just not good quality. This is actually two of them. They're super bendy. And also, for whatever reason, my seeds just did not germinate in them. It's almost like the soil stayed dry all the time. Like I would water it, I would come back in a few hours and the soil was dry again. I really can't explain it, but definitely they were not a big success for me. Moving on to biodegradable containers. The whole idea is that you're supposed to be able to plant things in them and then plant them directly in the garden and that they will biodegrade and your plant will not have to be transplanted per se. You can just literally plant these into the garden. I use these for lettuce seedlings and for pea seedlings, I think. They were good for a few weeks and then I started noticing that the plants just stopped growing. I dug them up and these things were still, still solid. And to the point that you could actually see the roots had kind of stuck to the side of the container, trying to get out, like looking for room to move. Uh, so after that, I thought, well, we'll try to use these because they're actually much thinner. So I actually put my tomato plants in these, but they retain moisture to the degree that I actually got fungus gnats. I ended up having to replant them all out of these containers into some different containers. In the meantime, oops. But in the meantime, there's so many better things that you can use around the house. And let me show you what those are. Now, moving on to the things that I love, these clear containers. So if you have clear containers that uh, you can recycle around the house, do it. They're really wonderful, especially if you're a beginner gardener. These um, are from the store and they had avocados in them and I use them to grow so many things. And they're really wonderful if you're a beginner gardener because they allow you to see the root development as the plant grows. They also give you a very easy way to see whether the soil is wet or dry. And so it just is really, really convenient and these didn't cost anything, obviously. In a similar vein, I also use these recycled sparkling water bottles because they're also see-through. They're really great for tomato plants, like later um, in the growing stages inside where they're, they're getting ready to move outside when you have to pot them up. The other thing that I really do love too, is little pots that you get at the garden store. Um, let's say you buy a little shrub and you bring it home or you buy some flowers and you bring it home. When you empty those out, I always keep those pots and use them for repotting. Anything really that you find around the house, it can be used for starting seeds. These are some yogurt containers. This is a takeout container. And the only thing you have to pay attention to when you're making your own seed starting container is to make sure that you put holes in the bottom so that you allow for drainage. It brings me to when do you start seeds? 
And this really depends on two things. Your willingness to repot over and over again and the space that you have inside your house or your inside growing area. For tomato plants, I will plant them eight to 10 weeks before I move them outside. Even though this means I have to pot them up at least one to two times. They have a really long time to maturity and I want to get a head start on the growing season. Okay, so the mistakes people typically make when starting seeds indoors are these. They tend to use soil that is too compact. So you'll see a lot of these seed germinating mixes or seed starting mixes at your local garden store. Sometimes these can be really expensive. So if you have the money and you're not on a budget, feel free to buy these. They actually, they do work very well. However, if you don't, the thing that I typically use here is I will use actually a garden soil made for an organic vegetable garden. And then I just mix in a little bit of perlite and that saves money, but it also keeps the soil loose and that allows the seeds to germinate and get out of that soil very easily. You do not want to plant your seeds too deep. Basically, we're not burying treasure here. For example, for peas, I will typically bury them about a centimeter down, which is about half an inch. And then for lettuce or cilantro or spinach, things like that, at a much shallower depth, sometimes even just sprinkling the soil over the top of them. Poor watering. This doesn't mean that you don't water them enough. What it actually means is that you don't water them correctly. And so what I mean by that is typically for me, once I sow the seeds, I will just use a spray bottle to actually keep them damp until they germinate. I hope this video has been helpful. If it has, I hope to see you back next time. Thank you. Bye.